America, the land of opportunity, a nation built on the ideal of equal opportunity, where everyone has a chance to succeed and where all of us are given an opportunity to share in the American dream. But is this the reality of today's America? The answer is no. The truth is that educational and economic opportunities for many Americans are on a steady decline. And this alarming problem is creating an insurmountable disadvantage. Yet diminished opportunities for some Americans don't just affect some of us, they affect all of us. That's because the very principles that our nation was built on are now ever so gradually being taken away. As the American dream continually slips away for some, we must all be concerned. Concerned to the point of taking action to stop this troubling decline. But before we can do that, it's essential to understand the reasons behind this threatening situation. Our future, and that of our children, depends on safeguarding the principles of equal opportunities for all, especially in regards to educational opportunities, but through decades of failed public policy, this fundamental principle is fading away, causing an alarming situation that's the result of three underlying issues. The first is tax policy. Second, economic development. And the third cause is funding for our schools. The fundamental problem is that most Americans don't realize there's a severe shortfall in school funding funding that's needed to adequately educate our children. They also lack an understanding of what constitutes good tax policy, meaning that basically any tax policy will do. The same holds true for economic development policy, which favors business over education. Together, these three issues threaten the future of not just millions of Americans, but America itself. Ensuring that all of us have an equal opportunity to succeed is vital to our future. And public education, quality education, is essential for doing that. But increasingly, our public schools lack the needed resources. Many are dangerously underfunded, creating a critical situation, one that's steadily becoming worse. The crisis in America's schools has been developing over several decades. During this time, policymakers have put forth a patchwork of initiatives and feeble attempts to solve the problem. These have included everything from standardized testing to tuition tax credits and vouchers. But their efforts have had little or no effect as the education gap continues to widen. And a major reason the situation is becoming worse is due to ineffective tax policies. Independent research indicates that for a typical state, eliminating current deficiencies in K-12 through public education will require, on average, about 25 percent more funding. And that doesn't even take into account correcting inequities relating to teacher salaries. Many Americans don't realize that when inflation is considered, the average salary for this vital profession has virtually remained unchanged since the early 1970s. But the disparity between teacher salaries and those of other college-educated professionals has grown dramatically over this same time period. So a major problem facing K-12 through public education involves attracting and retaining enough teachers and education support professionals. That's because 50 percent of all new hires leave within five years. Why? Because of poor working conditions and low salaries. The financial problems that our public schools now face have been developing for a long time. So long, in fact, that achieving adequacy and equity in school funding will now be difficult, but it can be done. Here's how the situation stacks up. First, a quality public education system must rest on broad public support. Then, the system needs a healthy economy, along with tax structures that are fair, stable, and in sync with the economy. Dependent on this healthy economy and fair tax structure is school funding, 
funding for a quality education that offers students the tools needed to succeed. On top of this is school capacity, which makes it possible to employ the best teachers as well as to apply proven programs and practices. This also involves providing schools with a modern infrastructure, along with a safe teaching and learning environment. At the very top of this funding pyramid is accountability. This gives students, parents, and teachers needed resources to achieve across-the-board quality education and engages them in taking responsibility for their respective roles. By far, one of the major challenges of providing adequacy and equity in school funding has to do with our nation's tax structure. There's definitely a gap between perception and reality. Although generally speaking, many Americans feel that taxes are too high. As a percentage of personal income, the average state and local tax burden has stayed relatively the same over the past three decades. And even though ours is the wealthiest of major industrialized nations, overall our taxes are lower compared with countries like Canada, the United Kingdom, France, Germany, and Italy. But while our nation's tax burden hasn't changed very much during the past 30 years, it has become increasingly unfair. Since 1980, state corporate income tax payments have fallen dramatically compared with individual taxes and as a percentage of reported profits. During good economic times, states have consistently cut fair and stable taxes, things like income and property tax. In bad economic times, regressive taxation is commonly used in an attempt to make up for financial shortfalls. These unfair taxes undermine our nation's ability to adequately fund public services. And above all, this trend puts the tax burden on those least able to pay. Even though income tax revenues have increased in recent years, part of the tax burden has shifted to those earning less. That's because they don't qualify for as many federal deductions. So while the tax burden on America's poor has been going up, the burden on its rich has actually been going down. Think about this. For every $100 of personal income, the tax burden on the poorest 20% of Americans is now twice as much as it is on the richest 1%, with low-income earners paying more than $11 in taxes, while those who can afford it pay little more than $5 on every $100 they earn. Not exactly fair, is it? Compounding this problem are ill-considered economic development policies. Just like current tax structures, these are preventing America from achieving adequate and equitable funding for its schools. Nationwide, state tax subsidies offered in the name of economic development have an annual price tag of more than $40 billion. Typically, these incentives and abatements are offered to businesses with no strings attached. So there's no recourse, no fallback, no anything if a company fails to deliver on its promise of job creation. And the education community oftentimes has no say whatsoever in these decisions. Decisions that take potential resources away from already underfunded public schools. The bottom line is that economic development subsidies combined with unfair tax policies and inadequate school funding spell economic disaster. Dollar for dollar, investment in K-12 public education would ultimately create more jobs than an equal amount of tax subsidies. It's vital that we develop a proactive agenda to deal with this threat to the American dream, a threat that makes it increasingly difficult to ensure equal education and economic opportunity for each and every one of us. The American dream is ours to protect. So help America make the right choice. There is no greater return to an economy or to a society than an educational system second to none.